Thank you, Haley. She, she, she made me promise not to do that, but I never actually promised not to do that. Thank you, Haley. All right, so my biggest regret so far tonight is wearing this jacket, just so that we're clear. Um, it is quite warm up here under these stage lights, but wow, now that the lights are open, I can see across this room, this place is full. Have you, have you all looked around the room yet? Like if you haven't turned around, take a look around you and look at all the women in this room. It's pretty, ama it's, it's pretty amazing. So I, I got a couple questions for you. Show of hands, how many of you, this is your first time at one night? Wow, wow. All right, well, I, this won't be your last one. This won't be your last one. So next question, how many of you have been to all of our one nights? Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so you, I'm a familiar face, right? I'm usually not in this capacity up here behind the podium. I'm usually holding a microphone, so. But Liz um, will tell you, I don't know if she's out here yet. If she's not, oh, there she is. I can see her hand now. Can't see your face, can see your hand. Um, but Liz will tell you throughout the seasons of one night that we've been doing since 2017, um, she, she kind of calls me her ride or die sometimes because she knows I'm part of, the, I'm part of that group of eight women that we have. And, um, you know, usually she has crazy ideas. I usually like, I'm usually all in. And she'll tell you I'm usually all in. Um, I'm ready to go all the time. Um, and it's a pleasure to get to serve alongside of these women and ex help execute. It takes a lot of people and volunteers to execute this night. So I want to give them a big round of applause. Like, they're all over this room. They're in the parking lot. They're in the back. And you can't see them all, but I promise you, there are a lot of people that it takes to execute this event each year. And so, um, you know, I'm usually all in on things that... Liz has up her sleeve for when it comes to one night. And then when she asked me this year, what about you speaking this year? I had hesitation. I was like, I don't know about that. I had a moment, but I stand before you telling you that the lie the enemy told me about disqualification to be up here and speak to you ladies is snuffed out. So here I am. All right, so I want to tell you a little bit about me because I don't, I, a lot of you may know me, a lot of you may not. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am um, a mom, a wife, I uh, have a career, and my husband, he's going to be upset with me about this too. He's right here on this camera right here. Hey, honey. And today is our 14-year wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary, honey. And he's not even bummed that I'm spending it with all of you, right? Like, he's not even upset about that. He's here serving. So thank you. Thank you to all the men in this room serving. All the men in this room. So I have two boys, two precious little boys. And then I have a career that I've had. I just last week celebrated 20 years at my company. And I know what everybody in this room is thinking. Like, I must have started when I was like 12, and you are absolutely correct, I did. So my mom's sitting over there, she got me a work permit and put me to work. So I'm just kidding, mom, I'm just kidding. So um, that's a little bit about myself. So but honey, just one thing really quick on the camera, make sure you're getting my good side and then we'll be good the rest of the time. So, all right, so all jokes aside, I, when Liz asked me to come up here and speak, I wanna tell you the timing was right, especially after we talked about we had decided this year was fearless. And I will tell you, I'm the girl that said, well, I'm not fearless in a phone conversation that she and I had. Because oftentimes when I think about one night, I think about what the t-shirt's gonna say. Like when we're talking about the idea, like when we're planning, like fearless on a t-shirt, I don't know that I can wear that because I'm not fearless. I said that to her and, that, and she said, oh, that's exactly why this event's gonna be called fearless because you said that. So. I want to tell you a little bit about the season, though, that I was in right after that conversation with Liz. Like, I had just come out of this season. I want to share it with you. I told you, I just told you all that I had been at the same company for 20 years. Now, I worked for a pretty large corporation. And like a lot of companies, um, post-pandemic, there's been reductions in workforces, changes in management, all these different things. And I've been there a long time. And, you know, rumor mills start 
around a company. And when you work for a big corporation with 10,000 plus employees, that spreads through like wildfire. And what the enemy kept, the rumors and the whispers that he kept telling me was, you're about to get fired. You're about to lose your job after 20 years of working there. Now, nobody else told me that, but the enemy did, sure did. And he said it over and over and over to me again. He caused me to lose sleep, take extra time at work, put more work than I already was putting in to try to prove my value, which took time away from my family, took time away from my children, my husband, some time away from my ministry work too. And so the enemy just kept whispering that to me over and over and over again. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your job. And I latched on to that. I did. I did. I, I really latched on to it hard. And when things like that happen in a big company, they typically have, they all happen on the same day, right? Like when they, there are reductions in workforce, they happen on the same day. Well, that day came. I was up all night. It came. And it went. And there was complete relief. I was so relieved. I, but I had no gratitude at all. And I went on about my next day and worked. And then the next few days, re with relief, with the emotion of relief, after I had, been, had, had the emotion of worry, right, which was just fear, right? Can we all agree that the worry that I was experiencing was just how fear had manifested itself in an emotion every day in my life with worry and anxiety. Fear, anxiety, worry. They're all the same. They all are from fear. And every bit of it displaces God. Every bit of it. So that day came and went. A week went by. And I remember having this moment. I work from home. So I remember having this moment sitting at my desk where I was overcome with conviction that it had been a week and I had not gotten down on my knees and thanked our Father one single time for the gift that He had given me in that job and the protection that He had, even though I had removed Him from the center and put fear there. I displaced Him during that season and put fear in His place in the center. That was me. The enemy guided me there. I mean, he's told me lies and whispers, but I did that. And it was because I, did, I don't know that I knew how to fight properly. Maybe, maybe I do, or I just wouldn't fight it. Just the enemy just kept whispering those lies to me. And so I, I'm going to stay on my notes too because I will get down a trail. So I, I want to tell you that that moment came, and I just said, God, thank you that week later. Thank you for what you've done. Um. The enemy takes seasons like that, and that's when he whispers louder and he stomps harder, and he makes mo no mistake about trying to infiltrate the things that you love and the spaces that God exists in your life. So, you know, I, want, I, say, I say all that. I want to say I was reminded very quickly one week after that season, that hard season I went through, that I had just failed to just give it to God. I had failed to give it to him and trust that he is who he says he is. His promises are true. He does what he says he's going to do. And if I had lost my job, it would have been his will. It would have been his will. He's my provider. And so I want to take this moment to read a scripture to you. And because this is, we're reminded what his word says. So I want to read to you. <clears throat> Because Paul gives us a formula for this. Um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. He gives us a formula to fight fear. And I'm going to read the NIV version of this. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, you have to give everything to God. Do not be anxious. By prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present those requests to God. I had walked through that tough season. It was painful. It hurt. And I had not given it over to him not one time. 
Not one time. So I was reminded of, I was reminded of this verse. And so I want to read this verse to you, though, because you know that what is the thing that young kids say because I'm not young? It's like, oh, that hit different when I read it that way. Or, you know, <laughs> like, I want to read it to you a different way. I want to read it to you out of the message. And the message version, Liz, you did say we like different versions of the Bible, and we do. So the message says that same, those same two verses the same way, and it hits a little different. So I'm going to read it to you. Do, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayer. Letting God know your concerns. Tell him your troubles. Tell him your trial. Tell him what worries you. Tell him what you're scared of. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and it'll settle you down. I need to be settled down. I needed to be settled down. And I had a conviction and repent, repentance of that moment that I'd not given that to him. So I do, I want to talk about where the emotion of worry from fear. Remember what manifested out of here because worry is still fear. Still fear. I can call it whatever I want to. Liz, we talked about, Liz talked about anxiety. It's still fear. It's manifesting itself. That fear is indifferent depression, anxiety, fear of death, um, worry, which is mine. So I want to talk about when I began to notice that worry started creeping in my life and it was something that I'm going to have to battle. It's when I became mom. Can anybody in the room relate to that? It's when I started having children. And that is when I started noticing. I, I, all of a sudden, I have these two, two babies that I have to take care of that I'm responsible for, and I worried about everything, everything, their health, everything that was happening in their life. Are they, are they hitting their milestones? Are, do, the, do we need to go to the doctor? Is he sick? Do I need to pull him out of daycare? All the things. I'm Dr. Google, so anytime we had something, <laughs> da, 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 I've diagnosed it already, and the sky is falling, okay? So I know everybody in this room can relate to that. Like, don't do that. It just puts you, it puts you in a bad place. So I, we went through a season with my youngest son. He was five months old. And, um, well, let me stop there. People in my life have given me profound words. Profound words. And I have stuck with me. They've said phrases. They've... There's been things that might, maybe for you it was a teacher that said something to you and you, anytime you have, are going through a trial, you pull out that thing that that teacher said or maybe it was a parent or maybe it was a friend. And so I got this profound word one day when I was sharing at my parents' house with my dad about my worries. And uh, my worry at that time was I had a five-month-old. He's six now, it tells you how long ago it was. But at a five month old, I had, was going through some medical stuff. And we had been to the doctor, and the doctor decided we needed to go to Shan's. And you know, anytime you hear Shan's Hospital, it's always like, oh no, that's something that we can't just see a doctor around here for, right? And so I went to, I went to my parents, and I was so upset. It had consumed me again. The same emotions I just went through these last couple months ago. I did this five, six years ago, it, it kept me up at night. I, I, you know, I couldn't think straight. It was, it just consumed my life. And it had also consumed my husband. We were worrying together about our sweet baby boy and this problem. And I remember sitting in my father's living room and I was telling him about how upset I was. And I was so upset. And he was sitting there in his recliner like he is most days when the day's coming to an end. He was sitting in that recliner. I don't know if any of you know what a recliner sounds like when it lets down. It has a certain sound it makes when that recliner pops. And uh, I was so upset, and I looked at him, and I said, I can't believe you're not upset. Why are you not upset? He was emotionless as, it was, as I was crying and upset about our child. And he popped that recliner down. And, sat and got pushed up on those two feet and he looked at me in my eyes and he said, the only thing that I am upset about is that your faith is so small. 
and it pierced through my heart like a dagger. And he was right. He was absolutely right. My faith was small. And those moments that where I wasn't believing, at least he was believing for me, right? Amen. Like he was believing for me. And he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried at all. And so I, um, I use that phrase. Is your faith small? Why are you worried about this? Is your faith too small? And to circle back to what I said, fear. When God, that's how you know it's fear. That's how you know it's sinful, is when it displaces God. When you have displaced God and put this in its place, when you put fear in its place, that's worry in its place. When you put anxiety in its place, you've taken him out of the center and you've put something else there and I've had seasons where I've done that so I want to tell you with that particular season amen there was nothing wrong with my son by the way we went to Shan's hospital and the doctor looked at us like why are you even here we don't even know why you're here go home and uh, so amen to that but it, again it was a potential problem and so Ironically, the definition of worry is to give way to anxiety or uneasiness, allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or troubles, uncertainty over an actual or a potential situation. And I will tell you, I'm pretty sure 90% of mine are potential situations where I have created something way bigger. And so I want to tell you, when you think about having fear or you're worried about something or anxiety about something. Replace that word with the word fear. So, for example, Liz. If I was talking about Liz, I'm like, oh, she don't bother Liz today. She's got a lot of anxiety today. What if I said, don't bother Liz. She's extra fearful today. Liz, would your posture change? It would? Or some, oh, Summer's just really worried about that. Oh, Summer's just really fearful about that. No, I'm not. I'm not fearful, like, but I am. So replace, taking that word, taking whatever that is, whether it's depression, replace it with fear. And see how your posture changes. And it may give you the tools you need to fight and think about it. Having that sound mind focusing on what the truth is and what his word says and you have formulas all in his word on how to fight. All in his word. So I want to tell you, I sat over there and I pulled out my little piece of paper right here. And I wrote things on this paper. I did this exercise with Liz probably a month or so ago. And I typed out what my fears were to her. And when I typed them out and looked at them, they became very real to me when I looked at them. And I don't know if you had that same response tonight after you wrote them on paper. But I want to tell you, I will not let these fears right here define me. I will not let these things right here displace God at the center of my life. I will not. And I've, I've written them down here, but these are fears. They're worries, anxieties, <laughs> doubts. And I'm going to tell you, it's trash. It's trash. Every bit of this is trash. What you're holding in your hand is trash. But today's trash, it's today's trash, but it's tomorrow's testimony. So, it's today's trash, but it's tomorrow's testimony. And Liz, I think you got some uh, trash you need to get rid of. So, Mr. Don, where are you at? Can you come get this trash for me? Is he in here? Oh, there he is. Liz, I want you to come and get rid of that trash. It's not define who you are. I put, I put scripture on here. Is it okay to rip it up? <laughs> I put scripture on here. Is it okay to rip it up? Just throw that in that trash can right there. So, Mr. Don, I think we got a lot of trash in here. Can you handle that trash? Gentlemen. It's All right, gentlemen. 
Gentlemen, it's time to take out the trash. Yep. Let's get rid of that trash. You got a basket. Rip it up. Rip it up. Rip it up. Rip There's it a up. basket at every end of the aisles on this side. I want you to pass that trash. Uh oh, left side. Pass that basket down and throw that trash away. And these men that are loving on us, they're going to take out those trash, those lies, those fears, those things that don't line up with the Word of God, and they're going to get rid of them. Doesn't it feel good to get rid of that? Just keep ripping it up, put it in that basket, pass it on down. Are you happy to see your friends and your family ripping up their trash too? We love our girlfriends, don't we? We don't want them holding on to the thing that they've been holding on to for years. We want them to let that go. We want to see them free. And just like you want to see your friend free, they want to see you free as well. They want to see you free as well. I'm going to be honest, this is taking way longer than we expected. <laughs> but just going to give it a minute, okay? Because it's very important. I don't want to pass this up. said the scriptures I wrote are burning up the trash. That's right. That's right. Amen. All right, y'all take out the trash. You got rid of the trash. All right. We're going to worship together. You've just gotten rid of those lies and those things that are fearful. Those things that bring fear to you. Don't pick them back up. Don't walk out of here and pick them back up. Don't walk out of here and pick them back up. Leave them at the foot of the cross and in, in the back of that trash truck where they're going, leave them there. <laughs> 